Welcome back in this third and final episode of this mini-series, talking together with Professor Martin Barstow from Space Park Leicester, and we um, covered some very, very interesting topics. First of all, Habitable World Observatory, the main topic of our discussion, so I leave you here the first and second episode of this series. In the first one we talked about his personal background and career, starting from the observation of white dwarfs and the university projects up to the James Webb Space Telescope, the Hubble and the HWO Telescope, so Habitable World Observatories, one, some of the most important milestones and achievements in his career. In the second episode we talked about the science and the vision behind HWO, the great questions like are we alone in the universe and the bridge between Hubble and JWST. So today we talk about the UK involvement and the collaboration industry and innovation, the strategic role of the United Kingdom and the international partnerships. But don't lose the most important part, which is the final one. At the beginning, we were talking about the, the role of the uh, United Kingdom. Then we zoomed out uh, more on a global perspective. But uh, I would like to, to zoom in back because uh, uh, we were discussing about uh, Space Park Leicester and uh, uh, more generally about the uh, UK. So what, what's the... Uh, I would say, what are the advantages that the uh, United Kingdom can, can bring, technically speaking, or also scientifically? Yeah, the, there are, there are so, several different kinds of advantages. One is money, <laughs> as in a, yeah, a contribution. Yeah, everyone as, can understand these as, advantages. As we already, but that's quite important, because sure. we, we already said these missions are very, very expensive. NASA, NASA obviously leads them because they're the largest agency, but they don't want to and can't necessarily afford to cover the whole cost. So, so Hubble had a number of partners. Uh, the UK was a partner on Hubble and provided mm -hmm. an instrument. Uh, similarly, the UK led a European uh, instrument that was provided for James Webb Space Telescope, and ESA also provided a, a second instrument as well as the launch. So, so the contributions that we're able to make are significant. Uh, and that helps make these missions achievable because we we bring expertise to the party because let, the UK is very good at sensors and optics uh, and, and these in, these uh, instrument systems. So, so we're bringing our skills along, uh, but we're also you know, making a contribution to the overall cost uh, of how the program runs. Uh, and so there's a huge benefit. There's a benefit for us, of course, because it means that our scientists are closely involved in defining missions like this. And so you know, when we eventually get into space, we're going to be involved in some of the key science. And that's the reason we're doing it, because we want to be part of that. In the case of Habitable Worlds Observatory, we want to be part of the people group of people who are going to find those planets. We want to be part of the group that goes back and looks at those planets and finds out whether there might be life there. You know, and to me, that's the greatest scientific goal of all, really, mm -hmm. at the moment. Uh, it's got to be one of the biggest science, if not the biggest science questions to answer. And so by being part of this large project and making a contribution, we get to be part of that team. Yeah, and uh, uh, well, um, okay. The, the first benefit that you mentioned, everyone can understand it. But uh, uh, yeah, also uh, being part of, let's say, of uh, of the whole pie. Also, in terms of of people uh, that can can let's say can access to that uh, uh, to that process is uh, is really uh, interesting. I mean, and uh, uh, maybe this uh, uh, can also bring benefits to the to the industry. What, what do you think about this? Oh, I, I or think... it's not. It's let's say too too early to to think about this. I, I, no, it's not too early to think about it. Uh, I think one of the reasons that the government might want to put money mm -hmm. into this, and it comes back to something we were discussing a bit earlier, is that they actually want to see the benefits flow into industry. Uh, they want to see the space industry supply, supply chain grow so that there are companies in the UK that are making money out of space. So we're trying to evolve industry quite early on in okay. the process uh, so that UK companies or companies that have got uh, a footprint in the UK 
can be part of what it is we're doing. And we, and we do have some particular examples like sensor companies like Teledyne E2V, mm -hmm. which yeah, those sensors are going to be on Habitable Worlds Observatory because there isn't really a lot of alternative. But it's also... Uh, yeah, it stimulates the development of new technologies in that in that sensor area when we impose the demands that the telescope is going to make on those sensors. So there's development to do. Some of that development can be funded by grants from the space agency, mm -hmm. and that is happening now. Uh, we are all looking at the kind of sensors that we might want to produce. Uh, we need to make sensors that are going to work well in the ultraviolet, which is a difficult technology. Uh, and there is still work to do on that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I understand. So Uh, that, that's just some examples. Yeah. mm -hmm. There'll, be, there'll be lots more. We have optics companies, uh, and we, there's going to be lots of optics to build. yeah, because uh, I ask you this question because, uh, let's say, from outside, maybe, uh, like, let's say, I would say common people uh, only see the, the final result, but... Uh, don't have, let's say, the, the deep look on, on the whole process. Yes, and, and I think it, apart from the sort of the kind of direct uh, impact on companies, I think what we should remember is that when we talk about these large price tags, that money isn't sort of put on a rocket and thrown into space. The money is spent on the ground. It's all the people who are employed in universities and companies. Uh, it's the money that they then spend in their local economies. Uh, so there's a huge... spin-off benefit in terms of impact uh, that comes out of building things like this, uh, particularly because this is high technology. So the jobs that we create are very are highly skilled jobs. So they have good value to the economy. Yeah, and yeah, because uh, it, it really gives an idea of how, the, let's say, the, this uh, uh, tissue is uh, is developed around uh, uh, this product. There's uh, this development, and uh, maybe uh, uh, you, you you can tell me if this is different from the past. Let's say uh, we, we're talking about uh, uh, Web and Hubble, and uh, let's say this kind of uh, economy or uh, uh, or process. Is it, is it really changing in It, conditions? it isn't really new in that sense. Uh, Okay. I think we're, we're articulating it more. Mm -hmm. Plus we need to justify how we're spending taxpayers' money. You know, I, the money, some of that money's come out of my pocket because I'm a taxpayer, but it's also coming out of a lot of other people's pockets. And I, if we spend money on these projects, th obviously there's societal and philosophical and scientific value. But I think we also need to articulate what the other values are and why why it's worthwhile. So it, it was always there, uh, but we need to be clear about the fact that it is there. But also we can do better at creating the linkages and getting the economic benefit out of the technologies that we develop. Uh, and a lot of them can be applied in other areas, particularly sensor technology has lots of you know, applications outside astronomy. So we can do better than we did in the past. Sure. Yeah. And yeah, uh, th this really gives a, um, an idea on how I would say uh, how, how direct is the uh, the implementation, the benefit from, uh, I would say, technology development to actual uh, implementation. But uh, well, now there is uh, one, one last one last thing I would like to to talk with, about with you, because we started uh, uh, talking about uh, your your beginning, the, the, the very start of the very beginning of, uh, of your career and uh, Uh, I, I can have understand. I understood uh, what's the, the the main driver behind. Uh, what's what, what motivates you on on doing all these? But maybe you would like to to tell me more about what's the real reason why you 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 pursue this uh, this path. You mean from the beginning or, or for the future? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, has it changed from the beginning or is it still the, the same? Well, I suppose it has. I mean, I started out just wanting to do the science, uh, which is exciting enough to, you know, the, the discovery, find, find out about the universe. Uh, that was my fundamental motivation. If I, if I, I might have been an astronaut if it had been possible, when I was that age, but in the UK, that was 
just not possible. Okay. Uh, there were no British astronauts around when I was a, a, a student. So, so I decided that if I wanted to work in space, then the, the next best thing was to build things that went into space. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I was fascinated by telescopes and planetary missions like Voyager. Uh, yeah, the, where I ended up was to some extent an accident because of the project I got when I came to Leicester to do my PhD. But the science always drove me. Um, but I, I think as time has gone on, other things become important. So the economic, you know, mm -hmm. making a difference economically, making a difference to society has become a driver. Uh, that's as important to me now uh, as, as doing the science. Um, another driver is you know, growing the community, uh, keeping the community healthy so that when I eventually retire, uh, these things are going to carry on uh, and the UK will remain uh, an important, well-regarded space uh, nation. Uh, and in case of Habits of Worlds Observatory, uh, I will certainly have retired when it flies. Um, I hope I'm still alive. Uh, obviously, you've got, we can, yeah, yeah, there's no guarantees, but uh, ho hopefully I will be because I want to see that result. I really want to see what comes down on it. I, like to be kind of still linked to it but uh i, I also got to be realistic that i'm starting off a project and then in yeah in a few years time i'm going to hand this on to a new generation the people who are going to actually finally put it in space uh, and be those exploiting that science uh, and i i do it quite consciously because other people did that for me I, I used Hubble, I've used Hubble ever since it was launched in 1990. Uh, and one central defining part of my career has been access to Hubble data. Uh, it's just superb quality data for the field that I work in. Uh, and if somebody 25 years before Hubble flew had not started the Hubble project, I would not have that benefit. I would not have been able to do that science. So, so I, in a sense, I'm trying to do the same thing. Um, I'm trying to be one of those people that steps this all up so that when you know, the next generation comes along, or maybe two generations along, <laughs> you know, the PhD students of, of 2040 or 2045 are starting out on their careers, that that facility is going to be there for them to use. Yeah, this is, a, I, I think it's a, it's the best way to, I would say, conclude our talk because it's so inspiring. So I want to say thank you, a big thank you for, for the time that you dedicated. And it was a pleasure to have you here. And uh, I hope that uh, we can talk again soon. I'd love to. It was a huge pleasure talking to you.